Hey, everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. Folks, we have to start off by talking about the price of Bitcoin because Bitcoin is still battling the DXY. The DXY started pumping upwards, but today it had a red candle on the charts. But Bitcoin, uh, you know, after its rally last week, started to form some red candles here. So we're seeing a tug of war, right? The bears are fighting the bulls here. Now, this is on the micro. From a macro perspective, we're going to new all-time highs. We're going to hit, I think, 100K plus. So don't get me wrong. The bull market's not over. It's just we have to exercise a lot of patience as we go through this volatility. Now, we've seen in weeks where we're getting data from the Fed about inflation and so forth, there's a lot of volatility. So that's kind of what's playing out here. We need that to settle down a bit. Uh, but the good thing is we're seeing the DXY start to break downward. So that's a good sign. And like I said, the bears are battling. We also saw some FUD articles started coming out. And it's funny, you know, when I see things like this, um, given I've been here for multiple bull market cycles, I can sniff it out and be like, okay, I see what's happening here. Here's a headline from The Spectator. Bitcoin is now a threat to all of us <laughs> or to us all. Crypto has entered the world of retail investing. And this was published today. So what's happening here, folks? I tweeted out about it. Number one, number one objective of this type of uh, content, drive sell pressure for short sellers, the bears who are shorting the, the price short term, not from the macro, right? Because we're not in a bear market, we're in a bull market. Number two, it's the full retail. Don't let them buy the dips, right? But when the market's pumping, then flip the narrative and say, oh yeah, it's the best thing since sliced bread, right? And then what happens? the dumb money crowd comes in and they become exit liquidity. I've often stated, don't be dumb money. Buy the dips, buy the blood in the streets and sell the pump, sell the euphoric blow off top. So that's what's happening here. It took me a, a few years to learn this and to not move by headlines, even if it's coming from the New York Times and Bloomberg or whoever else, right? Because look, people pay for pieces and articles and so forth. So let's say I'm Michael Burry as an example, and I'm trying to short Bitcoin. What am I going to do? Put out a whole bunch of FUD tweets, put out a whole bunch of FUD articles. Now, you don't know who the, who's behind paying, the, pulling the strings for the articles, but it's easy to do that stuff, right, folks? And it drives sell pressure. It makes new people, new retail investors sell their bags because they don't realize what's happening. And it also prevents people from buying. So it plays out to the bears, the sending the price down. So that's the game. Now, I, 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 some of you may do shorting and that's fine. I'm not against that, but I'm just letting you know the game and what's being played here. However, once again, guys, from the macro, we're still on track here. Crypto Wizard gave a great uh, update analysis here showing we have to be patient and this thing is going to eventually find its support levels and breakout. He says, a new all-time high coming, call the bottom. Now we're calling for a range breakout for Bitcoin. This is an impulsive move, not a corrective move like the previous ones. Patience is needed, but if this move holds, Bitcoin is breaking 73,000 and making a new all-time high. So so folks, the bull market's not over. Just once again on the micro, it's going to be volatile with in news about the Fed and all that stuff. He says, I believe the market is in an impulsive move whereby it will interact with $73,000. And if it offers a breakout, it will survive triggering a move to new all-time highs after this higher low has formed. In the event this impulsive move is invalidated or exhausted, then we will continue to be range bound. However, as it stands, I have full conviction upside is coming in the next few weeks. So folks, be patient. Uh, it's like a, a spring being coiled. And then when you release it, it's going to pump like crazy. If you've been here for multiple bull market cycles, you know what I'm talking about. So uh, use this opportunity to buy the dip. Uh, in full disclosure, I am not buying the Bitcoin dip. I'm buying the altcoin dips, especially those altcoins, which maybe have not moved as much yet. Um, you know, they haven't retraced. And eventually the liquidity will make it down to those altcoins. But I'm also adding AI themed coins such as Fetch and Render to my bag. Those have done really well uh, for me. So I'm buying the dips on those, not financial advice. Do your own research. Uh, so patience, guys, we got to be patient. But, you know, things are moving in the right direction politically, 
uh, even with the SEC approving the Ethereum ETF. And I want to share something that Senator Cynthia Lummis said, um, and she's been on a tear lately, calling out the SEC and uh, you know talking about we're, we're going to create a pro crypto army in the Senate, which is a direct slap in the face of Elizabeth Warren. She tweeted out, SEC's approval of a spot ETF for Ether is the latest sign crypto is being accepted as a mature asset class and underscores the need for Congress to pass a regulatory framework to protect consumers and provide clear rules of the road for the industry. So folks, uh, as I said in yesterday's podcast, the approval of the Ethereum spot ETF, it's not only bullish for ETH, but for all altcoins. It addresses the big question of uh, our altcoin securities, right? And many tokens are built on Ethereum. There are many proof of stake tokens out there. So it opens the opportunity and potential for additional altcoin ETFs. Now, on that note, enter Standard Chartered. So a Standard Chartered analyst says other crypto ETFs such as Solana XRP is likely a 2025 story. Now, we saw earlier this week that a CNBC analyst said Solana ETF might be next. So the narrative is being built here. And I do think that come 2025, there is a high probability of us seeing these other altcoin ETFs. Now, is it a guarantee? Of course not, right? We don't know what may happen, uh, but the door has been open with this Ethereum ETF. So following the recent approval of Ether's spot exchange traded funds, Standard Chartered Bank analyst Joffrey Kendrick says that the next chapter of crypto ETFs may be around the corner in 2025. Here's a quote. For other coins, for example, Solana XRP, markets will look ahead for their eventual ETF statuses as well, albeit this is likely a 2025 story, not a 2024 one. Kendrick, head of Forex and Digital Assets Research at Standard Chartered Bank, said Friday in a statement to the block. So the approval of Ether ETFs on Thursday suggests that ETH is not classified as a security by the SEC, thereby implying that other ETH-like coins, which were previously under scrutiny in cases such as the 2023 XRP case, may also not be considered securities, according to Kendrick. Here's a quote. In several cases, the core technology is so similar to ETH, it would be difficult for the SEC to claim they were securities given the ETH position, Kendrick said. The crypto industry now seems to have political backing on both sides of the aisle. So he's absolutely uh, right here. He, he called this backing for crypto in the US a true watershed moment. Kendrick said that the next question is not whether, but when the market will see further regulatory changes. So I agree with him here. Uh, the door is open. Uh, Genser and Elizabeth Warren have lost the narrative. Genser is in a very weak position right now. He did not want to approve these Ethereum spot ETS, but uh, the political winds have changed and he is on the losing side of history. So he's forced to capitulate here. So folks, I do believe, once again, there's a high probability of a Solana and Ethereum ETF next year. And I believe uh, there will eventually be top 10 baskets of altcoin ETFs. And uh, we'll, we'll see more, right? I've often stated it starts with Bitcoin, then they will move to altcoins. I've said that a million times to you guys. So we're seeing it play out here. We just have to exercise patience. Now, the tricky part is XRP would highly depend on the SEC Ripple lawsuit coming to a resolution. Remember, XRP has the clarity, but the SEC has to give the green light. And if they're caught up in litigation with Ripple, they may be hesitant to approve the uh, XRP ETF. So we need that to wrap up. I'm being realistic and I'm giving it a holistic view. So once again, if that's the wrap up, I don't think there's anything stopping that XRP ETF to uh, or spot ETF to be put into place as along with Solana. So folks, this would be pretty incredible. And uh, I hold both Solana and XRP in my portfolio in addition to ETH, in addition to Bitcoin. Now, a quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold. Uphold is a great platform where you can buy XRP, Solana, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and a whole bunch of other altcoins. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies on their platform. Folks, they have uh, precious metals that you can trade, such as gold, silver, palladium, and platinum. I've been using Uphold since 2018, so I can vouch for this platform. They also have transparency reports, audits, and so forth. They are fully reserved, so you can check that out. So if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, check out the link in the description. Now, folks, Coinbase makes another push to appeal its case against the SEC, citing lawmakers 
fit 21 vote. So this is a great sign. Uh, many of the companies that are in battle with the SEC and even suing the SEC, like Coinbase, Kraken, uh, Robinhood, uh, Uniswap, you name it, right? The SEC has been trying to go after all of them. Well, they have some solid footing now, some case law and regulations to go back to the SEC and say, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not going to fly. Um, we're going to sue you. We're going to win this. So here's what Paul Grewal, chief legal officer at Coinbase, said about this. He says, we just filed our reply in our request to file an interlocutory appeal with the Second Circuit. Unlike SEC, Coinbase's position remains the same to push for clarity for our industry and 52 million Americans who own crypto and against the SEC's overreach beyond the authority it's given from Congress. And they, of course, citing, uh, you know, the, the FIT 21 regulation and so forth. Now, he goes through a whole bunch of stuff here. I'll read another part of it, but I'm not reading the entire thing. He says, the core question we're asking to appeal is whether the SEC may regulate as investment contracts, digital asset transactions that don't involve anything contractual. And we're not the only ones who think this question deserves an interlocutory appeal. The SEC itself, in its request for the same relief in the Ripple case, acknowledged that this question has industry-wide significance and noted that there are substantial grounds for difference of opinion. So you see how big this Ripple win was, guys, for the XRP win? The industry can use it as case law to fight back. And uh, if you recall, during this week, I told you guys how the House Agriculture Committee cited the ruling by Judge Torres in one of their documents, go back to last year, in preparation to get crypto regulations passed. So huge impact uh, this Ripple win is having and uh, uh, hoping for a Coinbase win. I think they will get a big victory here and that will be great for the other exchanges because scumbag regulator Gary Gensler is going after all the exchanges. Now let's move ahead. Uh, Fred Thiel, who I've had on the podcast, I actually interviewed him at the DC Blockchain Summit. I'll publish the clip um, sometime this coming week. He is the CEO of Marathon Digital Holdings, which is a Bitcoin mining company that is public. He tweeted out some very interesting things today, my friends. Uh, he tweeted out that they have signed a deal with uh, Kenya, the, country, the government of Kenya, to, of course, use some energy resources there to mine Bitcoin. Folks, we are entering a higher plateau for all things crypto, where governments now are signing deals, sovereign wealth funds are signing deals with Bitcoin miners to mine Bitcoin, uh, taking uh, excess energy and blow off energy that would be wasted and mining Bitcoin, monetizing it. That's significant, folks. And uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, energy producers do this. And uh, it's going to allow them to, uh, once again, make some money and uh, off of wasted uh, uh, energy. And that's significant. And it's happening around the globe. So this is a big win for Marathon. Now, folks, some sad news. I, I know I'm kind of ending here on sad news. But the dog who became the Doge meme, right, uh, who eventually got used for Dogecoin, has passed away. She was 19 so pretty incredible. This dog is <laughs> so famous, right? <laughs> Becoming the meme in the first place, right? Uh, in just the, the kind of smiling and, and so forth. And then uh, becoming part of Dogecoin. So uh, 19, that's, that's a long time for a dog to live. So um, kind of sad, but, you know, rest in peace. Uh, the, the dog's name was Kabusu, if I'm saying that right. Um it's just fascinating. And I know some of you, you know, may not like meme coins. I'm not the biggest fan of meme coins, but I still understand the principles behind it. And that is network effects, crowdsourcing to an, a very different level now because of the blockchain. And that's a new dynamic that's going to be part of the future in, in how we interact with each other, fundraise and, uh, and do many other things. So uh, rest in peace. Uh, guys, finally, don't forget to grab a copy of my book, Rethinking Crypto, The Crash of FTX, The Rise of Safer, Stronger Digital Assets. Uh, it is available on Amazon in paperback and digital. Grab a copy to support the podcast. Also grab a couple copies for your friends and family who want to learn about crypto. It talks about crypto's past, present, and future. Talks about FTX, why it wasn't the ethos of crypto. Talks about the Bitcoin ETF race by Wall Street. Talks about the SEC and Gary Gensler's overreach against Ripple, Grayscale, and much more. Talks about tokenization, CBDCs, and all that stuff. So it would be a really great educational book for many folks. It, it also provides some tips for investing in crypto. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching and listening. Thank you for your support, and I'll talk to you all later. 
Thank you.